today's episode is the second part of a Western Electric step-by-step -step switching system. Part one will be listed below. This part will focus on the trunking between this and other switching machines, as well as incoming calls and toll calls being originated through this machine. I have the camera set on my workbench and we're looking at the bottom half of a bay of outgoing CAMA trunks. CAMA stands for Centralized Automatic Message Accounting. These trunks would be connected to a carrier system of some sorts and then would terminate into a toll type switching machine. Depending on where the office was located and the closest toll switching office that they would have homed into. The format of these trunks are the TSPS format. And there are at least two formats that were utilized, and this was set up for TSPS. Each individual trunk has four plates of relays which is approximately 40 some relays per trunk. This trunk has four different selector level inlets, which allows this trunk to be used for zero minus, zero plus, one plus, and other types of hotel motel features depending on the class mark. I'm using these at this point only for the OnePlus outgoing function. I will originate a few calls and you'll be able to hear dial tone and me dialing and then you'll hear the relays in the identifier out pulse. I have made a video for the ANI D, which is what this particular system is. So I will not put much emphasis on how the identifier works. I'm only showing it as one of the trunks. This would have been used for outgoing long distance to either one plus or zero type calls that an operator would be involved in. I just originated a long distance call to myself. Generally, this would have not been uh, allowed in the Bell system. They would have blocked the call at the tandem office. With today's electronics, uh, we could block the call from coming into myself if it originated from this office, but we've chose not to. So that was three calls. 
I have the camera looking at one of the outgoing trunk circuits. There are two trunks on one relay can, which is this one right here. One of the trunks is connected to the number three crossbar switching system. So this enables me to have access between the step-by-step -step and the number three crossbar. And this particular arrangement, this is used as an EAS route, which stands for Extended Area of Service. There are many different types of trunks that was used in the step-by-step. -step. These are a very simple, uh, kind of cheap and dirty loop two-way trunk. If I had two of these back-to-back -back with a cable pair between them, then you would have, between two step offices, the ability to have two-way traffic over a two-wire circuit. In my application, the number three crossbar has incoming only trunks, outgoing only, and a limited number of two-way trunks. At this time, I do not have any of the two-way trunks used. In my step-by-step -step office, none of these trunks are two-way at this time. In the future, I may have two or three between this and other switching machines. The very first trunk on my trunk shelf was modified to be a dial nine trunk. The trunk is no longer being used as a dial nine trunk, but it is still wired into my system as that. These trunks were the simplest to modify and most likely the most sought after amongst the collectors. Another type of a trunk that was used in the step office. This is a two-way CX, which is composite trunk. I do not have any of these at this moment wired up, but I do intend on having six to eight of them in the future. This is the outgoing to CX trunk. These are E and M trunks, as well as the ones previously discussed were E and M. We're looking at some of the E&M incoming trunks that could be used in the step office. These are incoming non-pulse correcting trunks. These would have been used for relatively short intra-office trunks. Depending on the time period, every step-by-step -step office would have had incoming selectors that in most cases were on a shelf that was not mixed with local selectors, at least in one aspect, depending on the size of the office. If you had a 200 line office somewhere, they could have and possibly did use the same shelf, uh, such as the bank would be the determining factor. In my office, it is set up as a larger central office. I have multiple EAS routes that both come in and leave this office, as well as incoming CNET selectors, and that's for the collector's network, the antique telephone collector's network, as well as what is referred to as toll completing selectors, which would have been connected to a toll tandem office. And in my case, they're connected to a channel bank, two asterisks for toll completing. When I originate a toll call from my network, they come in on the toll completing switches. If someone outside of this network dials in, they come in on the CNET selectors and I also have incoming selectors for the other machines, such as the crossbar and the XY. They 
function for the most part the same way, just depending on the digits dialed and how I had it set up. We're looking at the four incoming CNET selectors. These are in a rotating group, so when I terminate some calls, I don't know which one at this moment I'm going to hit, but I will not be in the same selector on each call because they're in a rotating hunt group. I will terminate a few calls into this office to busy numbers and so forth. You won't hear anything because I don't have any audio coupled to this. Um, and I can maybe at the end of this video make a few calls and let you hear dial tone, busy tone, and so forth. On the 9-9 nine, nine group in my office, I'm digit absorbing the first nine to reduce the need to have an additional set of selectors. The 9-9 nine, nine group generally was reserved for pay phones, and I only have a handful of pay phones, so I do not have a dedicated connector shelf for pay phones, and I didn't want to go to the additional work to have nine on one shelf and then nine on another and so forth. So I took uh, a cheap and dirty route and put digit absorbing in, which that would have been done in a very small office within the Bell system. On that call, I dialed a level that I have restricted so that people cannot reach the phones that I have in the house. I can dial through other routes and get to that connector shelf, but the incoming selectors were blocked. This could have been done in the Astra system, but I chose to do it in the physical hardware just to show it off. Each incoming call regardless of the type of call in a normal step office would have been on some type of an incoming selector most likely an incoming fourth then you may have a shared shelf on the fifth and then of course your connector uh, shelves whatever hundreds number was dialed the last two digits would be pulsed into the connector shelf so regardless of the type of incoming call, if it was originating from a crossbar office or an XY or any other direct controlled system, of course, it's dial pulse. And that's the only uh, thing that the step-by-step -step will recognize. In my case, I do not have any touch tone converters because in the channel bank I have, I actually have what's called a DPT card, which stands for dial pulse terminating, which is what was used to tie down to the selectors directly. These selectors have an SF circuit between it and the channel bank. So these switches could actually be SF controlled because you're doing it through the e-signaling unit. And I have a video that shows the e-signaling unit that I recorded several years ago. And in the future, I will do an HD video of the SF equipment and maybe a better explanation in that video. In this step office, I have two different types of coin trunks. 
This is referred to as a prepay coin trunk. This is wired to a rotary line switch and the line and cutoff relays determine that if the phone is going to be set up for loop start or ground start. There's a video on that as well. Each of these trunks have their own dedicated first selector, which is where the dial tone begins, of course. And they're on a coin shelf, wired so that they do not have necessarily the same access as a local subscriber would have. The wire spring later generation coin trunk. These coin trunks have a miniature originating registered concept built into them so that you can allow free access to the operator or 911 or any of the N11 codes. These trunks are very complex. They're rotary only because the step office is a rotary only office. However, I modified these trunks to add a touch tone converter in the correct spot so that I can have the features that this trunk afforded me as well as the touch tone pay phones connected to it. I've created a video for the pay phones and the trunks. A brief overview of one aisle of mostly trunk equipment. The ringing and tone plant is at the end of the aisle or close to the end of the aisle and the majority of this aisle is either test equipment or trunks. There are nine relay racks in this one aisle. I have some wire spring later generation outgoing trunks. These are two wire E&M trunks as well. In the 50s and 60s and earlier, they had a separate switch train, which was called inner toll. This is where the operator trunks would come into the office or machine switched at a toll office. I do not have any of these operational at this time, but I do intend to. The central office interrupter, the bottom one is the presently active one, and then the top one is on standby. Technically, due to a cable reversal plug on the rear of this, I have what would have been the active and standby reversed. And if I transfer to plant, it would then move to the upper interrupter. The interrupter takes a continuous tone or ringing and interrupts it. We have a 60 IPM brush, which is the busy number, 120 IPM brush, which is the reorder, and then the various ringing cams. You hear relays in the background, which are slave relays that works off of this interrupter to provide me more interruptions to other equipment in the office. That is done to reduce the load on the springs and then to distribute the load over relay contacts so that you don't burn up the contacts with too much of a, a load on it. Keep in mind that most of this equipment is at least 50 years old and had a long hard life prior to me acquiring it. These are the slave relays that is being driven by the interrupter. I have two groups of O carrier. This carrier is the A group. The O carrier is a 16 bi-directional channel system on two conductors. This is an audio only. However, there is a 3700 Hertz tone oscillator that could be used um, if this was used for channel signaling. In my case, we've disabled that and we're using e-signaling, which is 2700 hertz, I'm sorry, 2600 hertz. At this point, 
I do have two ends of this system, but I don't have it turned on and working. It does work, but I don't have it operational at this time. Rear of the ANI aisle, as well as the trunks and miscellaneous equipment. In addition to all of the two-way, two-wire, and E&M trunks, I have quite a few 3CL switchboard trunks. And some of these are working, and I have a video for the 3CL switchboard uh, with calls being originated to and from the 3CL switchboard. Rear of the 3CL switchboard trunks. These are from the 50s and the 60s, and I was very grateful for actually having the ability to acquire these. I have almost every type of a toll train that existed in my step-by-step -step office. And as I bring more of it online, I'll produce future videos of each segment. Within the step office, both Western, Automatic Electric, and ITT Federal, as well as Stromberg XY, which is a step machine, it's just a different format. They have four wire banks or three wire banks. AE, Western, and ITT had three and four wire, as where Stromberg is always four wires, tip ring, S, and H. C, I believe. With a fourth lead in the toll aspect, they used it as what was called an F lead for flashing to the operator back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and very lightly used in the 60s. If you listen to some of the Evan Doorbell tapes, when he is discussing a flashing busy, you can hear the busy as well as the flashing of the busy that would have been done on the fourth lead such as what we see here in my particular case i'm using the fourth lead for restriction and control functions on certain selectors in the office within this office i have dedicated incoming selectors for my 3cl switchboard and my number 12 switchboard and if you viewed a video of a 100-year phone call or the evolution of a 100-year phone call, in that video, I place a call into the step office over a switch. For those who are interested in an explanation on how the toll facilities work, please leave a comment below. The toll facilities between central offices is a very much different world than the local switching systems. As I briefly mentioned, you have two wire circuits, two wire ENM, and four wire ENM, as well as four wire SF. This is analog, as well as you have uh, four wire. Uh, circuits that's uh, PCM to uh, PAM which is pulse amplitude modulation the analog side of a T carrier system. If there is enough interest I may do a video on how some of the carrier facilities work. Again that is a complex system that's radically different than the local switching. This concludes the video of the step-by-step trunking in. I will make two or three calls so you can hear the tones in the background and then that'll be the end of the video.
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up.